Hey everybody, it's an incredible two years already since I've started a series here on my YouTube channel that I have not finished yet. A series about a journey from north to south, halfway around the globe. From the most northern tip of Alaska to the most southern tip of Argentina. Me and my wife in a real Alaskan bush plane, a Piper Super Cup, paragliding equipment, mountaineering equipment and a lot of motivation to explore the world from just a couple hundred feet above the ground, bird's eye perspective in slow motion on board. Because yes, a Piper Super Cup is a slow motion airplane. So far you could see us getting the plane ready for the big journey, making our way up to the starting point, Point Barrow, and from there, only flying south. We found amazing camping and flying spots in Alaska. That's the moment that lasts from midnight to five o'clock in the morning. Landed on some amazing places. Flew over stunning wilderness. Met bush flying legends. Great to meet you. The Crossed the right border here. to Canada. Right here. Went paragliding in Whistler and Pemberton. Whistler's right there. And this is where we're going. Experienced super hot weather this in Idaho. This is 40 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's way too hot. Yeah, it's Amazing exactly cross country right. paragliding in Sun Valley with Gavin McClurk. Flew over the Great Salt Lake. Got a first impression of high altitude flying and landing in Telluride. Ooh, exciting. Climbed our first 14,000 feet mountains together. Mount Agassiz. Cool, right? Agassiz heißt der. Agassiz. Dove into Utah's canyons. Met Trent Palmer. Why all the things? Got the aerial view of the Hollywood sign. Flew right across Los Angeles International Airport. Got an impressive view of San Diego at night. And finally crossed the border to Mexico. So this road in front of us, that's the border to Mexico. And we are gonna cross it. It's an exciting moment. This is where I stopped uploading. Not because we crashed or we got arrested. It's just because things got really exciting and busy there. I was doing all the flight planning, flying, filming and editing myself. And to make the dream come true and fly all the way to Patagonia, I had to eliminate one task. And that was editing. But as right now, traveling the world and adventuring all over the world, is not possible. Maybe right now is just the right time to recap the adventure, finish the series and dream about flying together to South America in a small bush plane. So check out the other episodes if you haven't. Subscribe and let's go see what happened in Mexico. <music>
So we wanted to pass this area as fast as possible. Therefore we did two really intense flying days with flying more than six hours per day. This evening walk on the beach in Matatlan was when we finally relaxed a little bit and understood that the real adventure has just started. The next day we wanted to go on to Colima, which is at the same latitude as Mexico City already. And a friend of mine called Sean has invited us to come and land there on his new airstrip that he's just opened up called Elevate. Just an hour before we arrived in Colima, Sean texted me and said we should better stop in Cuixmala and visit two of his friends. He said it's a grass strip and we won't regret it. We didn't know what we were getting into but a grass strip sounded nice after all those big airports that we've been passing through the last couple of days. So we decided to go to Cuixmala and we actually landed in paradise. We met Toby and Davis there and they were super motivated to do some cool stuff and film some action. That's actually where all this cool footage comes from. Nothing planned, just great coincidences. And while Magdalena was enjoying the private beach and the pool, I decided to go check out that exclusive luxury hotel a little bit closer. That was an amazing day on the beach and I already mentioned it before but none of this was planned. And I would say this was one of the special things about this project. By starting this trip we gave luck a chance and opportunities like this showed up. Especially further down south we were really depending on the help of all these new friends we found to make the big dream come true. So how did that actually go with flying from the roof there? Well, I've seen that building and I knew that if I can get up to the roof and there's a little bit of sea breeze, I will be able to soar it. But now it was time to move on again. Okay, in front of us is Colima. We've made it one day later than expected. Uh, we had a great time in Koshmala though, and so that was worth it. And now we're gonna land at Sean Strip, which is Echo Lima Echo, and it's a strip he just built for his um, skydiving operation. With Echo Lima Echo in flight, altimeter setting 29 nine decimal nine four, clear for leap ditch frequency. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Good day. In Colima, we didn't waste a lot of time. Just after we landed, Sean and Magdalena switched places and we went out to have some fun.
Yeah, we're flying into a one-way ticket here, a little bit. It's like a little channel. This is Hacienda de San Antonio. It's like one of the most beautiful spots in in Mexico, I think, for hotels. And I'm gonna check it out. A Hacienda de San Antonio is another luxury hotel that belongs to the same owners that also own Coixmala. They said, well guys, come over and check out this place as well. It's Mexico's best hotel. We are very lucky to be here, actually. It's an amazing place. It's a very, very old house, Hacienda, from the 1800s. And it's manicured perfectly and very, very luxurious. Wow, yeah, I've never seen a place like this. I feel a little royal, actually, to be here in this, like, places like this and then fly in the airplane. <laughs> Next stop was Valle de Bravo. It was already end of September, so we were already four months into the trip, and the total time we had planned was only six months. And in fact, we've only been to the third country of a total number of countries planned of 18. And all that unknown terrain was still ahead of us. And I guess most of you guys who are paragliding pilots have already heard of this place. It's one of the most famous paragliding spots in the world. And again, we got lots of help from the local pilots, especially in Valle de Bravo from Vico, who is a local flying legend. And he told us his story, which reminded us a lot of ours. And he also helped getting all this amazing footage. I'm Fra Francisco Gutierrez, but everybody knows me as Vico. Vico Volador. Vico Volador means Vico the Flyer. So my dream, since I start the ultralights, like you, I say with the engine, I go everywhere. First, I decide to cross all Mexico, yeah. Mexico in, in, the, in this type of aircraft. And then uh, I promise don't do it again, because it was so painful, all the sponsors, the money, you know. So I decided, I don't, I'm not gonna do it again. 10 years later, uh, somebody told me, Hey Vico, why you don't do the, the migration of the monarch butterfly? This is very important for you to, that you must learn from this place. We are talking about the biggest migrations of the planet mm -hmm. in insects. So this is the monarch and uh, it's a fantastic, amazing uh, phenomenon. All the monarchs of North America, all the monarchs that live in Canada and, and in the United States arrive uh, to this place and you can see millions of monarchs in the trees. This butterfly will live seven months instead of one month. You have one generation that flies all the all over here, 6,000 kilometers, uh, a butterfly like this. So, well, the idea of this documentary was to fly in a tri 
yeah. from here to here to here. Did you ever go from here south? Uh, until south? just Guatemala. We spent quite a bit of time with Vico flying his strike and my airplane around. And although it wasn't the best season for it, of course I went paragliding. <laughs> It felt great to spend some time in the open cockpit, but in the end we spent only three nights in Valle de Bravo, because Guatemala was already waiting for us. Tapachula Airport that's right at the border to Guatemala. It's gonna be nice because there's all kinds of volcanoes around and I'm looking forward to taking you on that flight. But I'll save that for the next episode and I'm really happy that I finally got back into editing all that footage. I'm really looking forward to show you how flying through Central America and into South America was going. In the meantime watch the other episodes if you haven't do me a favor and subscribe to my channel and of course, stay healthy. See you soon.